So we're shifting gears, uh, talking about uh, what many of us know all too well, the importance of restoring or preserving buildings. Uh, because Trinidad and Tobago has a wonderful culture. Uh, but one of our problems has to always do with uh, preserving, maintaining uh, buildings, heritage sites, and so forth. And you see especially civil society and various groups stepping up to the plate as best as possible to ensure that they do what is necessary to preserve some of these structures for generations to come. And one such structure is the St. Francis of Assisi uh, Church in Belmont. So we are now going to be shifting gears, as I mentioned, to talk about an enchanted evening. Uh, and this is the third one of such. And joining me to discuss this is Jose Navid. Uh, he is the, a member of the building committee of the St. Francis of Assisi Church in Belmont. Good morning and welcome to AM Prime. Thank you very much for having me present here. Excellent. And I mean, this is, of course, something that is very important uh, because, as I mentioned, preserving buildings, uh, preserving our culture at the end of it all. Uh, and this structure is one that uh, the building committee has taken the enormous task of trying to ensure that we have this uh, building preserved for generations to come. Uh, if you can give me a bit of background into the church, um, how long has that, that structure been there, and just a bit of a journey to where we are at present. Okay, so the, it was opened, first mass was still in 1902. Mm -hmm. um, it is a building that was designed by an Irish architect firm, Ashley and Coleman. And it was built by George Brown. You have heard the name George Brown in Trinidad for over many, many years in terms of building many of the magnificent seven buildings mm -hmm. and many of the beautiful edifices and within the country. And uh, it was a journey from a old wooden church to this having this more magnificent structure um, yes. in the, within the Belmont community. But like things over years, um, requires special special love, special care and attention. Mm -hmm. And although work would have been done over the years, it may not have been fully in keeping with preserving and maintaining the, the, the look mm -hmm. of, the, of the original church. And then there was an earthquake 15 or so years ago, um, which caused concern um, and the building was stopped being used for masses. Okay. And then for a number of years, masses were being sent in the, in the churchyard under tents. Um, and, but the, the parish, um, who have been faithful to the church over the many years, and the church has been an important part of the Belmont community, mm -hmm. recognizing there are four schools in Belmont directly linked to the church. And then there are some other schools like St. Francois Girls who would use the, the church for their graduation ceremonies in terms of masses and special occasions. Yes. And it's been such an important part of um, the community over so many years. Gotcha. And if I can just add, you mentioned about heritage and heritage buildings. The, the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago have a special interest in the restoration of this building mm -hmm. because of their initiative over, I guess, a number of years to have Belmont listed as a heritage district because of the importance Belmont has played in the culture of Trinidad and Tobago over so many years. And even from the deformation of already Belmont as Freetown, mm -hmm. um, on one of your signs outside, you have, you refer to the Rada community, which is so well known as coming from the Belmont Valley Road. Mm -hmm. um, and that community in part still exists there, okay? Yes. Um, well, it's, it's so interesting because um, many people see Belmont as being this hotspot or um, in some cases this place to stay away from. But in truth and in fact, as mentioned, um, it has been responsible for a lot of our culture. When we think about um, steel pan and, and so forth, when we think about uh, you see Moko Jambis and, and all these persons, those things were features within the community. Um, you think about the houses, the structures and so forth. Uh, so it's very interesting to, to learn that uh, the National Trust is moving in that direction. Um, in in terms of the actual church, what is the current state? Because I know you mentioned that um, mass would have been taking place in the yard. Has that since moved into the structure or is it still occupied? No, uh, it's still unoccupied. It's under restoration. Sure. 
uh, it's been closed for over 10 years. Yes. Um, the parish priest um, who recently retired, Father Lawson, when he was assigned uh, or chose Belmont uh, a little over 10 years ago and he saw what was happening, mm -hmm. um, on his initiative really and his, in, his drive and enthusiasm, um, he was able to drum up support from the corporate world, mm -hmm. people he knew over the many years of being in Trinidad, and was able to build um, a pastoral center within the compound of the church, um, which is now currently being used for masses. Okay. Um, but with the church itself um, being recognized as a heritage building by the National Trust, it's important that we preserve this building and start masses back within the structure. You know, it is important, and again, part of the National Trust initiative, but it's important for communities like a Belmont community to preserve what is beautiful about it. Yes. And when you consider, you, you refer to the Trinidad situation, but when you consider communities need to look up to things, mm -hmm. and to look up to things which they, has been there for many years and which they can look forward to for many years. When you see a building like the Belmont St. Francis Church, which scaffolded around it in this way for 10, 15 years. Yes. It doesn't uplift the, the spirit of the community, mm -hmm. and especially recognizing it's played such an important part of the community for so many years. Yes. So it's important to preserve that as even a part of uplifting the community, yes. looking forward to that inspiration one requires. Yeah, and, and it's so interesting that you mentioned that because I know there would have been certain um, feelings or emotions when, let's say, for instance, the Red House was under restoration and you heard commentators talking about um, there's a cow shed over it, a uh, president's house, the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. So we have been, as a people, uh, been through those experiences, understanding, I think, the importance of uh, restoring, preserving structures. And we quite have not gotten a model, I think, um, to how to preserve and, and to do these things in, of course, a cost-effective way in terms of long-term plans, medium and short-term. Uh, but we're seeing this effort here as really being a noble one because members of the community are coming for the parish and so forth to make this happen. Um, is it at the stage where all of the work has been identified or is it still at the design uh, phase uh, where you all are figuring out what exactly has to be done? No, we have sort of gone past that. Um, it's been in planning for a number of years and we have a wonderful team mm -hmm. of technical people. Um, we have had support from architects, mm -hmm. um, Douglas Walker. We've had the support and the current support of Rudin Roberts, whose name um, is a national award winner last year. Mm -hmm. um, as an architect, she was one of the founders of the Conservation for Society in preserving built heritage yes. and she is our current architect. We have engineers, we have project managers, quantity surveyors, and they've gone through the stage of we've just finished in early this year, phase one, and we are now going into phase two. Mm -hmm. And the work in preparing the scope of work for phase two has just about been completed. Okay. So phase one cost just over $4 million. That took over 10 years to raise. Yes. Excuse me. <coughs> And phase two is going to cost around $4 million. Okay. And as Rudin would always say, with restoration of old buildings, you never can tell what you're going to find when you yes. get into the work. So that's why I say approximately $4 million. Mm -hmm. The first phase took over 10 years. Mm -hmm. We can't stop the work now to, to raise the money for phase two. We just have to continue working yes. towards raising the money, but we're not stopping the work. Fair enough. And, uh, the event we have coming up, Enchanted mm -hmm. Evening 3, um, as the name implies, is the first event of its type. Although there was, in reality, the third one was last year where we had the gala at Napa, mm -hmm. um, which was a really, truly very successful and a wonderful event, still within COVID, but we got tremendous support from the Belmont community, from the public, um, from the corporate world, from the artists, mm -hmm. from the Ministry of Tourism, um, we, we had a tremendous support and we made on that event $650,000, nice. which is unbelievable. Yes. Most of it came from sponsorship and donations. And then coming out of that, we then had an art auction 
an mm -hmm. exhibition at Milfleur, which is the home of the National Trust. And again, we had so many paintings donated by artists, and we raised in that event a little over $200,000. Excellent. Um, this year, with the COVID sort of more behind us, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of events taking place. Um, and sometimes you get to the point where, you know, these people are asking again, they are asking again. Um, so you're arriving at a point where um, you're not quite achieving this year as what we need to achieve, mm -hmm. but we are not, um, we're not perturbed, we're not daunted. We are going ahead with our event coming up on Sunday the 18th of June yes. uh, at Napa. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a wonderful lineup of um, artists, again, donating their time, giving of their time, um, some with strong Belmont links. Yes. Um, we, we are proud of, we are proud, and I say we are proud of our, our Belmont artists and the Belmont community. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, you mentioned some of the, the people who have come out of Belmont. I mean, the greatest proponent really of Belmont is David Rudder. Um, he sings about it, talks about it, what it's meant to him mm -hmm. at his recent show that he had. Yeah, um, he spoke at length about you know, what Belmont has been and the importance of its, his form, formative years. Yes. Um, you, know, you have a Wendell Man Warren, yes. um, you have a Sir Alice Clark, you mm -hmm. have an Anthony Smart, um, and you have the Defoe School, which is really the Belmont Intermediate now St. Francis College. Yes. Um, and I mean, we, we, the list can go on and on of how many persons have come out of the area. Uh, and it's so very important to give back your time, your energy, and of course, resources. That, that's always a big thing. Um, so looking at the flyer, it says preserving Belmont heritage and building community. And uh, St. Francis of Assisi RC Church Belmont presents an Enchanted Evening 3. So as you mentioned, it's taking place at the National Academy of the Performing Arts at uh, the Lord Kitchener um, Auditorium on June the 18th, Sunday. Um, and some details in terms of, it starts at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And some details in terms of ticket prices. I'm seeing um, some tears there, if you can mind. If you yes, mind. so we have prices at $250, mm -hmm. $300, and $400. Yes. Some of the artists performing, we have Hermina Charles, we have Crisson Joseph, who are both performing individually, but also they are doing a collaboration to start the show. Nice. Um, we have QED in Raymond Edwards, Eddie Cumberbatch, and mm -hmm. Nigel Floyd. They have been tremendous support for us over the, all of the shows we have done. Excellent. We have the St. Francis Choir. Mm -hmm. We have the National Steel Symphony Orchestra. We have Nigel Rojas. Nice. We have Rion Elbon. Mm -hmm. We have the both of them doing, I believe, for the first time a collaboration together um, at this event. We have, um, well, and the police band will be closing the show. Okay. It definitely, I think, a star-studded cast that you yes. all have here. And, of course, all for a good cause. Um, I, I know that this is not the only way that people can contribute to this effort um, when it comes to preserving and restoring uh, the uh, church. How can persons get in contact with you um, and, and make donations, or, or is it that uh, they can find other ways of giving of their time and energy and effort toward um, the preservation of this church and, and the restoration? So, individuals can, if they would like to make a donation, they can, we can share the bank information and they can do contributions towards online contributions towards the bank. Nice. We can share with you our bank account name and you can also write checks and deliver them to the parish office mm -hmm. um, we as part of the event we had last year the fund the the art auction mm -hmm. we do have a few wonderful pieces of art remaining that we are going to have on display in the auditorium of the event so mm -hmm. individuals could have prices up individuals can give their name and contact information and purchase one of those paintings. Yes. Um, we, the parish office can be contacted mm -hmm. um, and also I can give some telephone numbers. Yes, by all means. 797 9884 799 3306 789 
4145, those individuals can be contacted either for the purchase of tickets or if people are interested in wanting to make a contribution, details can be shared. Yes. And, uh, Ticket, tickets are available at the box office of Napa also. Excellent. And, and I know that Napa's box office, their number there is 624 of course, this is no easy feat. Uh, it's not uh, going to be done by, as you mentioned, uh, of uh, cake sales and, and so forth. And this is really, uh, I think, you all owning the project, taking responsibility for it and pushing it forward. Uh, many people would say, you know, during this time, uh, it's of great difficulty. We're emerging out of the pandemic and so forth. But truth be told, people do have disposable income and people will put uh, resources at things that they are passionate about and they have an understanding about. And I think the mere fact of coming onto the program, sharing the information, sharing a bit of history as well is so very important because it puts more um, of a story behind this project as opposed to just being this edifice uh, and, and people passing by and, and seeing scaffolding, as you mentioned. So I really do hope that you all meet the goal um, and far surpass expectations. Uh, it's a star-studded cast uh, of performances uh, uh, and again, June 18th, Sunday, June 18th, this Sunday, at uh, the National Academy for the Performing Arts in Port of Spain, uh, the Lord Kitchener Auditorium. Any final uh, thoughts that you want to share um, or to just simply encourage people to come forth and, and give up their, their time? Certainly, it is Father's Day. Come and share the experience with your, as a family. Um, it's going to be a wonderful family occasion. Um, the following day is a public holiday. The, the artists are looking forward to entertaining you, to putting on a wonderful show. I just want to say, you know, Trinidadians and Tobagonians have been extremely generous yes. um, over the years. And we believe they will continue to be by nature. I think we, are, we want to welcome, we want to share, we want yes. to be part of the experience. We want to be part of recognizing the importance of our communities and the building up of our communities. Mm -hmm. So we, it's going to take time. We are going to continue giving of our efforts to make it happen. And we continue to look forward to the support of our Trinbegonians in supporting this, this worthy and wonderful effort and cause. Nice. And I, I, I just have a good feeling. I have a good feeling that this is going to work out uh, because as we were talking about, we've seen other instances of uh, projects that have gone through that restoration. It took many years to get to that point. But once that restoration is completed, it, it really invokes this sense of pride and patriotism, knowing that this belongs to us as a people um, and that when foreigners come to our country, and I'm sure that there will be persons visiting from parishes outside of Trinidad and to Tobago coming into the country, this will be something that we can be proud of and see. You can find this in Belmont amidst the culture and amidst but, the activity. To your point, exactly. I mean, the National Trust actually does periodic tours through Belmont. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they ex their hope is that when more and more of the buildings are preserved, that coming out of that, you will have other small businesses opening. Yes. People coming to visit and pass through can stop and get something to eat, yes. things to buy that will be unique to the place, um, things, yeah. artifacts, souvenirs, yes. things like that. The so it's all part of a plan. Yes. Indeed. And again, I wish you and the team the best of luck. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing this information. I'm sure that there are many people or, who are looking on, listening right now, who will be very interested in this project. And I want to strongly encourage persons to go out there, support, buy the tickets, and even go beyond that. Uh, because it, upwards of $4 million is not an easy feat, but I think that collectively we could achieve that. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, Jose Nive, uh, member of the building committee of the St. Francis of Assisi Belmont uh, Church.